All right. <laughs> As promised. Okay, we've got through Harvest Temple Challenge Mode. We beat it, guys. We got that. We got it on farm. And now it's time to actually go over everything that happened at the same time as Harvest Temple Challenge Mode. Specifically, the slightly controversial balance patch. I wanted to wait to do a proper analysis uh, until after the patch is actually in the game so I could show off some of the abilities and some of the things have actually kind of settled a little bit, right? Um, things have settled down a bit, all that kind of stuff. And of course, there were even a few hot fixes that we're going to blend into our analysis here to talk about some of the stuff because actually, some of it was really important. Specifically, the changes to Ranger was really, really important. Uh, the changes to Mech a little bit less so. Definitely the Tempest and Herald stuff also really helped out a fair bit as well. So, let's go ahead and take a look. Oh yeah, ooh, dead rifle burst. Oof, ouch. Very unfortunate stuff there as well. But anyway, cool stuff indeed. Okay, let's go ahead and leap into it and do the proper analysis. Starting off here uh, with Elementalist as well, my friends. Elementalist Gaming. So, there were a few changes here that were quite amusing, okay, but really not that much actually happened. So the the kind of the thing that definitely was expected to happen in PvP was Earth Shield nerfs. To be honest, they didn't really nerf the really strong parts about Earth Shield. Um, they nerfed basically the dash skill and the block on the second skill that gives barrier, which don't get me wrong, is it's a good change. Like Earth Shield is a really really strong weapon. It's kind of one of the things that's carrying Ellie right now, but I don't think it really addresses the annoying part about Ellie, which is the fact that it has a very low cooldown and decent duration invulnerability on the fifth skill in Earth Shield. And also the pull is extremely powerful and honestly not super well telegraphed either uh, on the fourth skill there as well. I think those are the ones that players wanted to be toned down. So that not being toned down honestly doesn't really change that much for Ellie. Obviously it makes it a little bit weaker, a little bit less barrier sustained from Stone Sheath, a little bit less mobility with Magnetic Surge and less aura application there with Magnetic Aura, which again, you know, projectile hate is a bit overcooked right now. So not the end of the universe. Uh, there, but yeah, Tempest and Support Guard, still definitely very competitive options in PvP from that perspective there as well. Uh, they also buff Staff in PvP. Um, bad news for PvP friends, uh, it, this is not going to help. Um, you're just so squishy. Uh, with staff, you don't have obsidian flesh, you don't have the conic, you don't have the dagger evasion, right? You're going to get absolutely crushed. Some nice changes for World Versus World, though. Specifically, I would say to Weaver more than Tempest, actually, to be frank, actually. Healing Rain, um, doing double conicons, that's a nice one. You know, you can get the odd Healing Rain off when you're playing Weaver. And just a bit of extra free damage there with your Ice Spikes, too. And Lightning Surge in PvP and World Versus World. So, actually, I think these are nice for Weaver. Weaver got nerfed pretty hard. A lot of range damage in World Versus World got nerfed. So, having this back is... Certainly going to give a bit, just a little bit more power back to Weaver in World vs. World. Also, Frozen Ground cooldown reduction is also pretty nice. Like, uh, something that Ellie does quite nicely is area control and area denial in World vs. World. So, having more chill up time, right? Like, more of the knocks, all that kind of stuff. It's pretty good there as well. Yeah. They they changed the target cap a little bit for Fiery Eruption. Um, and the target cap got reduced on Fire Storm. They actually already did this, I believe, in World Buster. They've just done it in PvE now as well. So they just basically just aligned it. They're making everything five target. But these changes, they, this has already happened kind of where it counted. Right? Uh, but yeah, there you go. In Air Trait Line, oh no, they added 5% crit while attuned to Air. But don't worry, Elementalist. They actually fixed this. Hell yeah. Okay, I love to see that. Look, now it's active in any achievement when you have the air trait line. Wow, good job, ain't it? There was actually a little bit of almost um, overreaction about this change. Elementalist specs actually don't have the hardest time crit capping in the universe. You get like free precision on Weaver and you get loads of extra stats on Catalyst. So it kind of wasn't the end of the world, but it was just ba poorly designed, right? Well, I mean, it was it was scuffed, right? It, it didn't do what it was supposed to do, right? Particularly because you got the Fury. Uh, Raging Storm, this is actually a change that you're going to see on a lot of classes. I actually like this design decision here to give like AoE Fury on some of these traits. It makes DPS specs give more utility. I think in general, this is what Weaver really suffers from. And I think I'm going to make a separate video about some of the classes that I think aren't very well designed in Guild Wars 2. But the issue to me with um, with Weaver, Catalyst, uh, and Elementalist in general, and Tempest, is that Ainet don't really let them um, go into their own niche that much, right? Like, we Elementalist for a long time is it's kind of all done the same thing, like damage, squishy kind of glass can damage with no utility. I really think they should push each elite specialization in a very strong direction. Tempest should be a support, an aggressive support as well. Um, 
quite a lot of the time, or a full healer. Catalyst should be kind of like a brawler. It should be kind of like Firebrand, right? Um, where you're you're doing damage, you're a little tanky, you're in melee, you've got defenses, but you also apply a bunch of boons. And Weaver should be all out glass cannon DPS, right? But the, the problem is right now is that Ain't It doesn't really let that happen. They kind of say, well, you guys are all damage and maybe you have some scuffed boon duration, right? And some scuffed boon application kind of thrown in there as well. But they don't really commit to it. They say, oh yeah, quickness is enough, right? Right? They forget that Guardian has Aegis, protection, stability, resistance, right? E you know, protection, right? All this kind of stuff. I think I already said that, but you guys get the idea, right? I, I really think that Ain't need to commit and say, you know what, Catalyst? Yeah, you're going to be a really aggressive boon support. Weaver, you're going to be like a mega damage class. There's a crazy amount of DPS. Tempest is going to be this aggressive support build or like a hard healer uh, that has loads of great boon access and loads of revival power. Um, I think I'd like to see stuff like... Uh, Cooldown reduction on rebound, I think, on Tempest could be really interesting. If you made the cooldown on rebound, like, 40 seconds, that would be really cool, I think, uh, for PvE, right? Obviously, you've got to be a little bit more careful in PvP, but uh, in general, like, these changes are not actually horrible for Ellie. I know that a lot of Ellie mains are going to get really big mad um, about this, but actually, uh, Ellie got off lightly here, okay? You know, no matter how bad it gets, you could be Warrior, so it could be worse. And, you know... I kind of like some of these changes too. Like, I like that um, Weaver now gives AoE barrier. I think that's really cool. It's a nice piece of utility to have there as well. And I do think they made some very good um, design changes here to Catalyst. The default boon applied by the sphere while an air attunement has been changed from quickness to fury in PvE only. It still provides quickness by default in PvP and world versus world. So two things here. I don't really like, I think it's really poor design that it works differently in different game modes. I think the numbers being different is fine, but I think changing the boon is really bad. It makes it really hard for players to understand and actually learn how it works. Uh, I think rebalancing in another way, but making it work the same way is really important. Not a fan of that, to be honest. Um, but I will notice this. Ellie mains, allow me to simp you really hard. Ainet have now removed the only reason why they can't buff Catalyst pretty significantly. So the issue with Catalyst is that you could do a zillion DPS while also um, providing like 30% quickness. So you could stack like three of them with no commitment to no co with like a very low DPS loss, essentially, or well, no DPS loss, really very minimal, and then apply permanent quickness by stacking these. They've now removed the ability to do this unless you actually commit to a trait, which Ainet are okay with. Now... This means that they need to buff Catalyst now, because Catalyst, it's still not in a good spot, in my opinion. Yes, can it do a lot of damage? It absolutely can. But the problem is, is that the damage it deals probably isn't really worth it compared to the amount of utility you lose compared to other elite specializations. This is the issue with balance. They should, in my opinion, they should massively increase the boon output on Catalyst. So it's like, again, like a, it's a bit more firebrandy, right? Because it looks like Anet don't really want to nerf firebrand or mech. Looks like they probably want to move more things up to the same level. Fair enough, they can do that if they want to. Um, but yeah, that means they need to look at maybe giving it some AoE stability, maybe giving it really good protection access, like high protection uptime just by doing its DPS rotation. They need to maybe give it um, some bed some more AoE healing on Hammer, right? So you can AoE heal a little bit. They need to give it a healing skill that can support the team, like a healing turret or wash the pain away or something like that. Well, I guess Tempus has that, but that's what they need to do, right? But there you go. Also, I do really like this change into Spectacular Sphere. Um, well, the first half it anyway. Um, basically, you get a bigger Jade Sphere. This is really good. So now you can apply boons much easier. But here's the thing that I really don't like. Horrible design change. Um, taking this trait gives you a flat 10% DPS reduction. Why? Horrible design. What an unfun trait to take. This is just basically lazy, to be frank, actually. It's like a very, very lazy thing. Um, what this needs to be is that it should just say... Uh, they should nerf down all of the damage of Catalyst on weapon skills, like the base damage values, like they did with the Jade Sphere here. But then they should make the traits that you take for damage, like the one that doubles the effectiveness of Elemental Empowerment, right? Um, which I believe is called Elemental Epitome. They should just make that trait better, right? So in other words, there's a bigger difference between taking a support trait and a damage trait. Firebrand also suffers from this, where you don't really get punished for taking support traits very much. And I think that in general, the game does struggle with this. I think they should try to make support traits um, not give you a DPS increase, or rather, like, support traits are a big DPS trade-off to take uh, compared to a damaging trait here as well. Um, whereas right now, that isn't really the case on a lot of builds. And if they want to do this, which is what they want to do, right? It's very clear that they want to do this. 
right? They want to make it so that um, you, there is a trade-off to giving boons, which I think is fair. I don't think anyone would disagree with that. But I think the implementation here is poor. And I also think that they should probably make sure that it's equally applied to across all professions. Bit of a theme here is that you'll see that a lot of the kind of new boon options typically don't perform super well. Catalyst, I feel like, is one of those builds that never really took off. I think the boon axe is just a little bit too clumsy and maybe insufficient as well. It's missing the really key ones, right? And that's another video all on its own, to be honest, just talking about... Um just talking about like, oh yeah, stability and Aegis, right? That, that's the big elephant in the room, right? Like if you can't give stability and you can't give Aegis, ooh, yeah, not good. Um, particularly if you're kind of going to play be playing a heal build or a support build. So they changed some damage values, but honestly, it's not that important. If you're interested, Ellie actually does still do a lot of damage. It still benches pretty damn nicely. So if you are able to play this build well, you'll still perform pretty damn nicely. So yeah, there you go. Very nice. Let's move on to Engineer. Oh, you know what? I forgot. Look, this is why, guys, you know, this is why Ellie never gets any changes. Because even I forget about it. I forgot about Lucid Singularity, guys. Check it out. This trait has been reworked in Tempest. It now applies alacrity to nearby allies upon successfully completing an overload. Duration is now 6 seconds with a radius of 360. So, th this is a bit of an interesting one, okay? This is a very, very interesting one. Um, This is the way it works, right? We use our overload... And bam, here we go. Wow, Alacrity. And actually, this build, by the way, is pretty decent, right? You can actually um, quite nicely apply a lot of boons uh, by doing this, right? As you can see here, we just kind of do our, like, full boon thing. This is kind of like the build that you might find yourself playing on Heal Tempest these days, right? You can see that we can apply, you know, we've got a, we've got a pretty good selection of boon uptime here. You know, we can do all of the key ones. We can do some swiftness, right? We can do regen, we can do vigor, we can do prot. Uh, I, I think the really big problem here is that overloads are a pretty damn clumsy clumsy skill, right? They're a very, very clumsy skill to use. You have to channel, you're going to have to be in melee range to apply it, right? It's not It's not an ideal way to apply this particular boon, because if you get interrupted or you have to cancel your overload, man, do you get punished. It's just so punishing. A lot of boons um, in the game right now, they're very passive, right? You know, you just kind of hit a button and it pulses around you, like, during that duration. It's like, ugh, ugh. Very unfortunate stuff. I don't actually know how I would change this trait. I'd have to really sit down and think about it. It's not a bad trait. I think Heal Tempest actually is pretty damn strong. You have really good healing. I'd play a build like this. You take Arcane for the revive trait and more healing when you dodge and loads of passive healing on water here. All this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I, I think if you moved it to the start of the overload, not the end of the overload, that might be a little bit better. It would be a bit weird, but I think you could maybe do that. I also think this trait could maybe have a bonus effect as well. Um, and in general, I think Tempest needs a little bit more. I think they could look at other trait lines, like the Earth trait line, to maybe give some better stability or barrier application there. Um... Or just even look at Tempest, right? And just make Tempest slightly better in some of these other traits, too. However, I will say that there's a lot of potential with the damage Alacrity Tempest build, in my opinion. I, th I actually find that build to be higher value, I think. Because you can do a decent amount of DPS, which will probably get buffed a little bit in the future. Uh, while also providing extra might, boon extension um, to your group, right? A little bit of free healing because you're playing Elementalist, right? So you have the water attunement. You can play like Dagger or Scepter and you can still heal a little bit there. Wash the pain away. You can take Rebound very easily. Um, you know, you can do stuff like some crazy utility like AoE Stunbreak with Eye of the Storm. I do think that build is really strong. Uh, and you'd probably play like some kind of Ritualist build or even a Celestial build there. And you'll definitely deliver a huge amount of value. You'd play Fire and Earth in that case. Um, and basically play super aggressive and just rely on Elementalist natural support. And you'll apply a Vigor uh, regen with that. You'll do good pro up time. Um, you'll have good might up time. You can share fury out too. And the fury changes here actually, by the way. So now that DPS builds give a lot of fury output, this means that you don't have to worry, worry about applying your own fury so much on Tempest because you're almost certainly going to have some of it and you can just extend it uh, with heat sink. So Tempest definitely works out pretty well. Works out pretty damn well indeed. But yeah, I'd probably make it a little bit better. 
But yeah, I mean, yeah, you get stability here on Overload, but the problem is it's not AoE, right? Like, if Harmonious Current was, like, AoE stab, well, one, that would probably be... Well, would that actually be that busted in PvP? I mean, it would have to be very... It, yeah, I mean, that would be... That would be pretty questionable in PvP. But it would be pretty interesting for PvE, actually. And, and not overpowered in PvE, by the way. But in PvP... Ooh. 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 Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's something to think about. I, I think Ellie needs a bit more. It needs definitely a bit more. Loot Singularity, I think it should do. And, and the other really big issue here as well that I have um, is that Elemental Bastion is honestly a pretty sad trade-off, right? Not having this trait, ooh, that is unfortunate, right? You lose a lot of your healing for this when you want to spam your shouts out. Not being able to heal on shout definitely feels pretty bad on Aura. It wasn't like a crazy part of your healing, but having that 600 range AoE heal was really nice. And now if you want to give Alacrity, it's like... Oh, man. Oh, it's very, very unfortunate stuff. It's really, really tragic. Yeah. You know, yeah, Swiftness is a bit hard to come by, right? Uh, I mean, it's it's definitely a less calm boon than it used to be, um, which I think is actually good. It makes it a lot more valuable. Funnily enough, though, Ellie is one of the ones that does it really well, actually, right? You have, like, Eye of the Storm. You have Cyclone, right? You have a lot of stability. You can always blast your Lightning Field here as well. So Ellie actually does have, like, very good, robust, um, just AoE boon support, as you can see here, right? You just have a lot of just general boon access here, which I think works rather well, actually. So I don't actually think Ellie suffers from this, but I think it could really use, like, a little bit more... Like, the, the big problem that a lot of supports are facing right now in the game is that they really suffer from uh, not having stability access. Not having stability access, you're pretty sad, right? You're a pretty sad panda if you don't have stab these days. So yeah, you have to be, uh, you know, you've got to be a little a little bit careful with that. And I think that unless they want to remove other boons, for example, like Mech and Fire, which basically have the full suite of boons, then they need to look at kind of bringing Ellie up to speed there. But it's definitely getting there. Like, no joke, it's actually really getting there. Um... At this point, um, Tempest was really strong before EOD, before they nerfed it to 10 targets. Um, it healed really well, right? It had like mega 10 target healing. Uh, and now it is uh, it is not too bad, honestly. I, I think one issue that Tempest does have, it's not very good at healing the other subgroup anymore, um, which kind of sucks. That's definitely a bit of a feels bad. Right? It's extremely difficult. You don't really have any pulsing heals. And a lot of other healers are quite good at doing that. Whereas previously, you could just heal everyone because you were 10 target. But... Uh, yeah, design issues aside, it's going in the right direction for sure. And I really like the Elementalist hybrid build. Like, a few patches down the line, right? Um, I think you're going to have uh, really, really solid builds for Boon Tempest. And in PvP and World vs. World, Tempest is still excellent, uh, an excellent choice. Tempest definitely kind of like the top support pick in PvP. Uh, and also in, um, you know, in, in World vs. World too, very good support pick as well. Uh, you know, kind of up there with the Scrapper. Scrapper still does tend to outperform it in big stuff, but in small stuff, Tempest definitely has its place. It really does indeed. It's fantastic. Enjoy your Tempest gaming. But yeah, um, I, just to underline it before we move on, I really want to say that I think ArenaNet need to really clearly define some of their elite specs. I think they tried to make Catalyst too weavery. Um, I think Weaver should be the glass cannon mega damage, and um, Catalyst should be much more of a brawler, a bruiser, right? Instead of trying to force them into this, like, mega damage role, I think they need to remove the overlap and say, this is what this spec is for, this is what this spec is for. There needs to be more specialization in the elite specializations, right? They, they need to say, this is the thing that this build does, right? It can do this. Look at it. Look how cool it is. Right now, I think that's lacking in Ellie. Ellie just doesn't, Ellie doesn't have that thing. It's like, whoa, look how cool Ellie is, guys. Whoa, that's so insane. It's so cool. I mean, yeah, that's what Ellie needs. All right. Engineer. This is actually a surprising change. When I read the notes, I was like, ah, whatever. Like, you know, no one cares. But it turns out that, holy shit, they made Power NG absolutely insane. Um, I wasn't expecting it to be a full-on machine gun. I was assuming it was going to be still quite slow, right? Rifle auto attacks are very slow. I was like, ah, okay, that's nice right there. Making rifle auto attack a little bit better. But damn, they went absolutely insane. This, <laughs> this ability is so crazy. In fact, it was so crazy that they had to nerf it pretty hard. They actually nerfed power mech down um, a lot by nerfing the damage that the mech did uh, by like 50% in a lot of cases, right? You can see the um, the mech arm, that's the auto attack on the mech, right? The DPS went down a lot. So now a lot of your abilities are a lot stronger. Um, you know, you, a lot more of your damage comes from like using your mech skills, not just like the mech just pounding away, um, auto attacking like an absolute lunatic. Um, this build is still excellent, by the way. Um, power mech is really good. In fact, I'd actually compare it to power scourge. Um, 
It's that good, actually. It's uh, massive range, can AoE really effectively, actually. Um, has great DPS uptime, has a good healing skill. You can take healing turret and heal your team. Um, yeah, it's tanky. It does damage all the time. It's an absolutely excellent build. It was heavily used in Harvest Temple challenge mode progression for that exact reason. Uh, but yeah, there you go. They also made jump shot a bit smoother. You kind of like lunge over. It's like fast now. It's a bit easier to use. Um, the animation looks a bit weird. But yeah, it, it's kind of cool, you know, I guess. Uh, but yeah, this build is actually insane, by the way. Um, particularly with the Jade Dynamo, this build is really strong. You can actually self-buff yourself with quickness now a lot in open world. And also, it means that if you have patchy quickness uptime, uh, Jade Dynamo will actually carry you um, really hard because it will kind of fill in the gaps in your quickness because this trait means whenever you use a mech skill, you now get a bit of free quickness there as well. And you can use your mech skills more often. So yeah, this ended up making power mech really, really strong. They actually had a lot of quality of life. The quality of life, by the way, is huge, right? Really, really huge. Being able to use Rocket Fist basically anytime you want. Being able to use your Stun Break wherever you want, basically the um, Crisis Zone and Discharge Array. This was huge because the big problem here was that if you used your F2, it would interrupt your... Um, you, it would interrupt barrier burst, right? So you couldn't um, use your AoE stun break and give uh, other boons during the mech doing anything else. This was actually really frustrating to use, I think. It was a lot of, it was very unfun. This is a really good change. I'd like to see them actually go further here. Um, I think they should also make shift signet behave the same way. I know this is like crazy. Like, mech has a lot of quality of life already, but the one thing that can kind of troll you and will definitely trip up new players is the fact that um, if you use shift signet, during barrier burst, it will interrupt barrier burst or whatever your mech is doing. I think you should be able just to teleport your mech while it's using abilities. That's how players can, by the way. If you, um, if I log on to my NG, um, if I use my Mace 2 skill here, I can actually, ex this is like a very common thing with Shadow Steps, I can extend the range of it by teleporting, right? And the effect of the skill will be over here. So I can use this um, combo with Shift Signet to teleport directly to where I want to use my ability while I'm using it. Uh, and that will still, if, if I do that with the mech, you'll see that it will interrupt. Take a look at this, my friends. Look at that triumph, look at that triumphant music. Wow. Truly insane. But here we go. If we just wait for this, give me some alacrity. Right, we do this, and we hit our F3, and we port. You can see that it interrupts that skill. That's probably like the final thing of quality of life. And look, I know this is going to sound weird, because I know that mech is a bit of a blight on the balance of the game right now, but the other thing that makes this spec so annoying to play is I can't tell my mech to go somewhere. This is actually a very annoying, and maybe this, maybe it's good that you can't do this. In fact, it probably is. If you could do this, it would be it would be so hard to be in terms of support because you can already kind of be in two places at once, right? I can be out doing a mechanic, um, you know, like, like a really good example. Of this would definitely be on the Harvest Temple CM here. Let me just go ahead and show you this, uh, show you guys this real quick. Um, one of the reasons why Mech was so strong here was the ability to do this at the end of the fight. Basically, me and Planix were playing mech, and we could very easily move away to handle mechanics, and our mechs are still on the group, uh, supporting simultaneously. If you had even more control over this, it would raise the skill ceiling significantly, but it would also make it so, it would make it even more overpowered. So that's maybe not the way to go here, but it is annoying. It does annoy me that I can't move my mech somewhere to support people. It kind of gets stuck and positions itself very, very badly sometimes, but yeah, yeah, a bit like the Ventari tablet, basically. Uh, but yeah, that might not be a good idea. It might make it very, very, uh, very, very overpowered, even more than it already is. So maybe not the way. Um, but yeah, Power Mech got buffed really hard because you get like Giga Crit Chance with these Jade Cannons now. Very good ability there as well. Condi Mech got a lot of kind of quality of life stuff too. Uh, it, 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 I don't really have that much to say about NG, really. Like, there, there's only really positive changes. You know, I think they could maybe look at Hollowsmith and buff Hollowsmith a little bit. It's underperforming a bit because it's a melee spec. They should give it more damage. Like, you know, Power Mech completely dominates it now. A lot and stuff like Power Virtuoso and so on. Um, but yeah, this is not crazy. I mean, there is definitely, like, one thing um, as a general point. I don't like what they did with, like, the passive boon traits. They made them really boring. They just, they, in fact, these are like duplicates, right? And you'll see this with the crit too. Like high, um, no scope is basically a, um, a complete duplicate of this elementalist trait here, Raging Storm. I think this kind of stuff is really uninteresting to be perfectly honest. Like they shouldn't just copy paste traits. They should just straight up make new traits. If they want to like standardize everything, that's totally fine in my opinion, but they should really make new interesting things instead of just like, oh yeah, we're just going to make everything literally a copy of other traits there. Not that much fun. 
But in general, um, you just do more damage now. You know, the, the this ability, I think Amos Drop it. they should just remove the minimum range on this, right? It kind of just makes it annoying to play, in my opinion, because basically what Amos Drop it now does, you have to be slightly outside of melee range now, basically, to get value out of this. It will always proc on the mech, obviously, because of, um, you know, because the mech basically gets the juicy Amos Drop it there. But, I mean... Oh, no. It's, um... Oh, no, it doesn't do that anymore. Yeah, they reworked it. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fool. But, yeah, it's kind of an unfun interaction there. Just remove the minimum range. And this trait here was so weird. I have no idea why they changed medical dispersion field to be this way. I think it was actually really interesting the way it was. Now it, like, stores healing and pulses every three seconds. To me, this is almost like a strict downgrade, actually, in, in terms of functionality. I, I find this really clumsy to use, right? Because the way it worked previously was actually really cool. When you would heal yourself, 50% of your self-healing would go AoE at the same time. That's great. That's like a really cool um, ability. You know, that's a really interesting skill. Um, it promotes you kind of when you're in a high pressure scenario, you kind of like become more and more powerful. But yeah, it, it, it's, it's not a very interesting functionality. I mean, you get value out of regen now, which actually is quite nice, right? That kind of makes your regen even better. Bear in mind, guys, Mechanist actually gets better regen anyway. It has a trait that gives it 20% better regen. This makes your regen even better than it already was, which is really nice. And it's still a strong trait. You're going to play this on, on your support engineers, but I just think it's just less... It's not as good to use, you know? It, it's... I don't like it. I don't really like the way it works, um, but it's still good. So that's that. That's kind of all the really key things for NG, really. Like, nothing super, super crazy um, for Engineer here. Yeah, they, they nerfed Thromai as well. That's a world bus world change specifically because, um, you know, Boon Rip is pretty good. And yeah, they actually did end up nerfing Power Mech. Specifically, the rifle auto attacks are a bit uh, shorter as well. And you get free might in your DPS rotation from Blunderbuss as well. They, they buffed the utility on this quite nicely, actually. So Jump Shot is a lot smoother to use, um, which is nice. That's kind of cool. Blunderbuss kind of gives free might. And bear in mind, like, might Right now kind of automatically happens a lot. So this means that when you're playing your DPS mech or your Holosmith with um, Rifle, you're just going to contribute to Might just passively while doing your rotation. It's actually subtly powerful as well. It's quite powerful. And Net Shot is a four second Immob in PvE. That's actually insane. Um, Immobilize is a really powerful piece of utility. Uh, and bear in mind, guys, like NG already has some decent utility. Right? It has lots of cleave damage. It can heal itself pretty well. It's quite tanky. Giving it even more utility is pretty juicy. Mech in it, if you're a mech enjoyer, it's happy day in PvE. Nothing much really happens in PvP here, and I we, just assume that's the case. Realistically, guys, not much happened for PvP in World Bus as well, to be honest. Um, there are a few things that happened, uh, but nothing too crazy. And that's definitely a criticism I have of this patch too. I think they should have lent more into PvP and World Bus as well. I was actually expecting a lot of um, a, a lot of changes to PvP and World Bus. And yeah, yeah, they did nerf the, they nerfed jump shot range because it let you leap into turret, uh, leap into towers. Quite funny, actually. Quite amusing, I have to say. <laughs> oh, that's funny stuff. There we go. Uh, yeah. That's basically all that happened with Engie. How exciting is that? They they nerfed the confusion on Konyamek. Bear in mind, Konyamek actually didn't really get nerfed that much. As I understand it, it was actually maybe even a slight buff or about a wash, about the same. But they made it, um, the quality of life better. It's easy to play. Um, not that, you know, did Konyamek, very hard to play. Although to be fair, you know, you got to juggle a lot of kits with that. But what they also did was they made it apply less confusion, right? And not that much less, but a little bit less confusion. And that was kind of causing it to really overperform, particularly on bosses like Desmina and so on, where it attacks really quickly, really fast attacking bosses. By the way, you guys want to see something fun? Um, if you are a confusion enjoyer, like you're playing Mirage or you're playing, um, you know, a whole bunch of Mechanist, then go to the Echovold Forest meta, right, with the giant golem at the end. Basically, when he does his swipe, this happened on Conjured Amalgamate too, by the way. When he does his swipe attack, he does loads of little AoEs and every single one activates confusion. You will annihilate that boss if you have loads of confusion on it. It is, it is beautiful. You like, like, it's really funny. Every time the boss does that kind of swipe attack, the HP bar, like, noticeably goes down right when you play and when you have a lot of confusion because it just completely destroys itself quite funny there actually very amusing stuff you love to see it let's go guardian now i'm not gonna lie more changes that i'm not really a big fan of um aina in their crusade to destroy unique modifiers have actually removed a unique modifier that actually wasn't really that dangerous in fact this was not a 
this was not a meta distorting unique modifier at all. You didn't have people in fractals or, uh, you know, in in uh, raids saying, oh yes, we're only going to play with Signet Share Guardian. Very common in fractals for sure, because, you, you know, you don't have to commit to a full heal. But I think this is really sad. My issue with this isn't that it's getting nerfed. My issue with it is that it's reducing skill, right? Um, it's reducing the skill cap. And don't get me wrong, I'm all in favor of lowering the skill floor, right, making it easier to learn the game. But I think this was actually a really cool interaction where you would use your signets to share a buff and time it correctly with like a burst phase or something like that, uh, and share it out to allies. I think that's actually really cool. And also the Amplified Wrath change here as well. This is a bad change, okay, and let me explain why. They've tried to nerf Firebrand here, right? But they've actually nerfed, well, I mean, it, it, it's a bad change from a design, but in terms of an actual balance perspective, it's a very good change. Because Firebrand is overpowered, both quickness and DPS Firebrand. Yep, that 100%. But here's the problem, right? Um, this, it nerfs the quickness build and the DPS build. And obviously, Arena probably don't mind the idea of DPS Firebrand existing. What they don't like is Quickness Firebrand not having a damage trade-off. What they need to look at is making traits in Firebrand better, so there's more of a trade-off, right? For example, they could look at Legendary Law and make leg they could reduce the base damage of Firebrand, but make Legendary Law better. So in other words, when you go give Quickness, your damage drops more than it does right now. Uh, because right now, the trade-off is very, very low. Firebrand does a shit ton of damage while applying Quickness. Now, there is also the complication that Firebrand probably should do lower DPS because at the end of the day, it has so much support baked into it with the tomes that I don't actually mind flat nerfing its damage, but I also think you're going to run into design issues because I think um, DPS Firebrand is perfectly acceptable to exist. Just sadly, um, yeah, it, uh, meme, I guess, unlucky. Um, it, it will just, yeah, they're nerfing at the same time, right? So I, I've got a bit of an issue there as well. Um, the other thing with Firebrand is they made Mantra of Solace give Aegis in PvP and World vs. World. This actually does make it better in World vs. World. It wasn't really an issue to have that Aegis spam because it gets ripped off so much. Personally, I don't actually like Aegis spam. I think it's kind of unhealthy design. Uh, but the thing I really don't like here is the same as the Catalyst change. I just really dislike that it's functionally different. It's just very jarring to new players. Not a big fan um, in this regard uh, of that. Good change to Willbend and nerfing it down. It's still really strong, by the way. But I think if you nerf Harbinger, PvP gets a lot healthier. I think the quickness uptime that Harbinger gives to the Willbender is where things get really degenerate and really unhealthy for the game, but it is what it is. The signet changes are actually, dude, these are bigger than people think, okay? People are not really giving this credit, but these signet changes are actually quite significant, okay? Um, signet of Mercy, in my opinion, is actually now a really good pick on any Firebrand build. You, honestly, arguably, even on, well, you can't really fit it in on, like, Dragon Hunter, I guess, but if you could, it would be insane. This is a 40-second cooldown revive um, with a short cast time with quickness and a long range. This is actually really good. This is like Signet of Undeath, but it's Guardian, right? And you can take this pretty easily on Firebrand, too. Firebrand kind of has some free utility skills, right? You can do Quickness Mantra, um, Signet for more damage, and then you can just take Signet of Mercy as well, right? Instead of, well, you want, like, you, you do per Purging Flames, Quickness Mantra, and then Signet of Mercy, right? Or you could do full DPS Firebrand and do like Signet of Mercy, Signet of Wrath, Purging Flames, right? For like more damage and just drop Mantra of Flame, right? As your third utility. That's a sick trade. That's a really good trade, by the way. Um, and while you don't have it, while you while you have it, it actually gives you a nice bonus. It gives you more concentration, increasing your protection uptime, your quickness uptime, might uptime, fury uptime, all that kind of good stuff. This skill is actually really good. Um, if you can afford to do it, if you don't need stability, for example, if you don't need to take Sanctuary for CC or whatever. This is actually a very competitive pick um, if you're playing Firebrand. Signet of Resolve, you're probably not going to run this. Mantra of Source is insane in PvE still. You're definitely running that skill. It's not a bad skill, to be fair. I could maybe see it on... I could maybe see this on some kind of tanky Guardian build in PvP. Maybe. Maybe. Um, because you lose a Condi every five seconds, cleanse two when you use it, and it's a quite a strong heal. It has a long cooldown, which isn't ideal, but I could maybe see it see play there. But I mean, uh, Pervert Insurance is quite nice in this regard too, because you keep the passive permanently, so you lose a Condi every five seconds. Pretty damn juicy. But yeah, there you go. 
Pretty cool stuff there. Strength in numbers. Now you get... This is actually by far the strongest kind of unique modifier trait that got reworked. You get three seconds of protection on a 10 second interval. Uh, you, you don't take the Valor trait line very often. I could see this being good in PvP though, actually. In fact, I imagine it is pretty good in PvP because you just get... 30% protection uptime just for existing in a really wide radius and you take Valor and PvP. In World of Warcraft and PvE, you're never taking this. But yeah, in PvP, definitely a solid option. Competitive, I'd say, with the shield trait. Although the shield trait is really nice because you get more Aegis um, on your Shield of Judgment and you can use your knockback a bit more, which is a really, really nice skill, actually. So definitely some trade-offs there for you and you get more toughness too when you're on your shield, giving you more defensive capability. But yeah, pretty good skill. Uh, pretty good trait now, actually. Um, you know, wasn't the most common ability in the US, but now I think you actually will see people playing around with that a little bit. The other signets, they're a bit like, ah, eh, whatever, right? Um, Signet of Wrath, actually, this, this is fucking crazy. I have no idea why they did this. Um, six seconds of immobilize on Signet of Wrath, okay? So if you're playing Condi Firebrand, that's like another 50% duration or so. That means that it's over 10 seconds, right, of of immobilize on one skill that is godlike utility i don't know why they did this firebrand already has amazing utility they just gave it even more utility with this or even stronger utility that is absolutely ludicrous 10 second immob is crazy has a very short cooldown too with a lacquer you can like nearly permit a mob right yeah that and scepter three is unreal because scepter three chains of light is a five second immobilize and this is a six second immobilize you have 11 seconds base immobilize when you actually stack up the your duration again you're going to be kind of like 50 percent duration you're looking at like 20 seconds like nearly 20 seconds of immobilize on two skills absolutely insane utility wow um god mode skill uh, for pve the elite um signet Eh, I mean, it, I, I, honestly, it's probably a bit of a better effect now. Like, using the active was never good. This actually was a decent skill if you didn't use the elite shout for whatever reason. It's like a bit of free pulsing here, which is pretty good. Now it's a bit more like empower that gives prop resolution and stability on allies. Kind of cool ability there. And again, another functionality split. Ugh, I don't like that. The thing is, is that I, they, I don't think you would even use this in... PvP and World War Sword, because you can't move while you're using it. And even worse, um, you'd have to give up the Elite Mantra, which is an insane skill, by the way, um, because that stun breaks allies, which is really key in World vs. World. So uh, there's another, like, scuffed thing here as well. But yeah, 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 indeed. Escort is insane, right? With, like, a Giga Immobilize there, right, you know? So you're, you're not really playing the skill. Uh, but it's nice that they reworked it a little bit. They reduced it. It's kind of a cool skill now. It's a cool skill. But they should probably make it so you can cast it while moving, right? And channel it while moving. That's, like, the thing that would... Maybe make you think about that skill a little bit more, but yeah, I don't know. Like, it's a very weird split, there in my opinion. Some changes to Guardian overall. I actually don't mind them. Um, I, I think I was expecting some more things, I guess, to uh, to PV. I was expecting like more significant reworks to the signets, but they just kind of buffed them and made them a little bit stronger. And I'm a bit sad about removing perfect inscriptions. Like, uh, I think it was a very harmless, unique modifier that just promoted skillful ability usage um, rather than, um, like, making it very oppressive. Like, stuff like banners and spirits, I get it. Like, they're 100% uptime and they're insanely strong, right? That's very, very oppressive to have in the game. But having, like, a situational skill that you can use to empower your allies for a very short duration, and it's very optional, right? You don't, you know, I mean, I guess banners were as well, right? But this was even more optional than banners. Not not really the biggest fan of this change here as well and I, I also it also kind of reduces build variety because now there's absolutely no reason to run radiance on heal firebrand right um heal firebrand there was a build in fractals you could play with radiance where you'd basically be a support that also has like a cool offensive buff like a situational offensive buff you'd use bane signet you'd signet of wrath right to empower your allies now there's literally no reason to run radiance at all um, on support firebrand, you'll only run virtues, which don't get me wrong. I mean, virtues is really good. It's, you know, reduces your tome cooldowns, gives you some passive sustain and extra endurance regeneration with battle presence. That's great. It's really strong, actually, in PvE uh, and World vs. World, of course. Uh, but, eh, I'm, I'm not a fan of it. Honestly, it's... Um, I think build diversity and, like, having cool, kind of crazy builds to play um, is always fun. But, yeah. Uh, Signet of Mercy on your DPS or Quickness firebrands, guys. I'm telling you, right? Actual insane, right? It's, it's Signet of Undeath, one of the best skills in the game. Signet of Mercy, now actually really fucking good. Like nearly half in the cooldown on a revive. Ooh, oh my god. Get in there. Holy shit.